All right. Well, it is good to see everyone. Appreciate everyone coming out tonight and appreciate everyone too. The no uh, some of you drove a long distance. I really appreciate you coming out. It means a lot. I appreciate it. Pastor Randall inviting me to come. And uh, normally I would have brought my wife or some of my uh, some of the family with me, but my wife is great with child right now, and you know un at the uncomfortable stage and all that. And so the all the driving wasn't real appealing to her. And then with the kids, I was going to be you know riding a bike the entire day, and I didn't want you know so I I don't know what I would have done with them the whole time, but. Um, but yeah, I, I am thankfully invited me to this. I've been wanting to come since the first year, but you know, it's real easy to come up with excuses <laughs> to not go to an event where you're gonna have to run or ride a bike for a hundred miles. And uh, so, but when he asked me to come preach and I kind of lost my excuses, but at the same time, I am planning on doing 50 miles tomorrow. I wasn't gonna do the whole thing, but uh, my excuse though, I have to get back for a funeral. So that's legit, right? So um, now there, there is a funeral I have to do Saturday morning uh, pretty early and so I'm, i want to make sure i get home at a decent hour but i'm not gonna lie i'm kind of thankful for the excuse because i've never come close to doing anything like this but i like a good challenge and uh so i'm, I'm excited about it. who's planning on trying this tomorrow Who, who's who's all the crazy ones all right well you know try to do something we can brag about right and that's what it's all about that's why we do these things but anyway uh, I am thankful to be able to be here again and uh, be able to preach to you tonight and hope uh, you get a blessing from it. But go ahead and look at verse 22 of Matthew chapter 17 and uh, turn over to Luke chapter 24. We're going to go over there too after read a couple verses here. But it says, And they abode in Galilee, and uh, Jesus said unto them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men, and they shall kill him. And the third day he shall be raised again, and they were exceeding sorry. Now, you know, the Bible doesn't, you know, a lot of times it just doesn't give a lot of details where I would like some details. But I mean, isn't this kind of a cool thing that Jesus just said? I mean, I get why they would be sorry about Jesus being betrayed and being killed. But he said, the third day I'm rising again. That should kind of change things, right? You know, but obviously there's a lot that they didn't understand when Jesus said this. And so they were very sorry when they heard this. This, was, this wasn't really something that they wanted to hear. This wasn't really what they were looking for. I think they kind of had it in their mind. Jesus was going to come and basically take over. And, you know, they were going to be there close to Jesus, uh, you know, when he's kind of ruling and reigning. And so whenever they're hearing about how he's going to basically be delivered in the hands of men and killed, that doesn't sound like what they were thinking. That wasn't what was in their mind. And, you know, often when we hear things that we don't really care to hear, we tend to forget those things sometimes, don't we? We kind of put those into a different part of our brain and we just kind of lose track of those things. But at the same time, it's easy for us to look at that and say, man, they should have been thrilled by that. That's exciting because, I mean, we all know the resurrection of Christ is the single greatest event in human history. And so, we're, you know, but they didn't understand that at the time. So they're discouraged. They're sorry. Now look what it says in Luke chapter 24. It says, now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulcher, bringing the spices, which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Okay, now, after that passage we just read, why would they expect to find it? He, didn't he tell them? Isn't, isn't exactly what Jesus said was going to happen? Is, hasn't that happened so far? So, I mean, where were they on the third day? You know, that's when they should have been camping out. You know, that's when they should have planned the revival meeting and, you know, been getting everybody all ready to go and say, hey, be there third day. He's coming back. That's what they should have been doing. But they didn't. And so they entered in, found out the body. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments, and they were afraid and bowed down their face to the earth. They said unto them, why seek ye the living among the dead? Okay, something the angels got wrong there is they weren't seeking the living. They were seeking the dead, weren't they? But at the same time, the angels, they don't know any better than to just believe everything that God says. That's how holy angels are. They just happen to believe everything that God says. So whenever these guys come along, oh, they're looking for Jesus. You know, that's what they're thinking in their minds, not knowing they're looking for the dead. And it said, they said, he is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee? saying the Son of Man must be delivered in the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day 
rise again. The angels are like, hey, this is exactly what Jesus said was going to happen. And then notice what it says. This is where we get the title of our sermon. And they remembered his words. All of a sudden, after the fact, after it happens, all of a sudden then they remember the words of the Lord Jesus. This is exactly what he said was going to happen. And so this was a very dark time. Though, you know, though that three days after the death of Jesus, that was a very dark time for those disciples, for the followers of Jesus. They're probably thinking during those three days, hey, they killed Jesus, we're next. You know, they're going to, eventually they're probably going to come for us. They had been, the one they had been following for all these years now has died. He is in the grave. There's a good chance they're probably going to be next. It looked like their only chance of survival was to go on the run. But the truth is, they never really had anything worried about. They didn't really have anything to worry about, but they were worrying. You know why? Because they forgot the words of the Lord Jesus. They forgot what he said. They forgot what he had very plainly told them. And you know, there's a lot of words that Jesus has told us. There are things that the Bible has told us very plainly that as Christians, we often forget. We often forget, and because we forget those words, we end up missing great opportunities, and we don't want to do that. Now, this sermon that I'm preaching right now, uh, you know, I, I, I teach the guys in our church tra that are training for pastors about putting sermons together and things, and I'm always explaining different types of sermons. And, you know, I like doing expository preaching, but I like topical preaching too. And then this is what I would kind of put in the categories, just like a camp meeting type sermon, all right? That's just where you just take a line that you like from the Bible and you preach on whatever you want, all right? I think it's appropriate. I think we're allowed to do that sometime. And I don't know if we're really in camp meeting territory. Are there any camp meeting? I, I, I know of one camp meeting in Texas or in Kansas. I've seen some pretty good uh, action at, but I don't know if we're really in camp meeting territory. And I can only preach a camp meeting sermon if I got camp meeting people in the audience. So, uh, you know, I got to see white hankies, you know, fl you know, flying, ladies screaming, guys running, and uh, other and fat guys dancing. Otherwise, you know, I don't know if I can pull it off. But no, no, don't do that. But uh, this is kind of that type of sermon, just something a little motivational to help you out a little bit. That I think we could all use right now. But there's some things that we do. I'm afraid things that Jesus just plainly said that it's like we just forget them sometimes. And you know, I often wonder if we have angels looking at us, seeing how we're acting, seeing how we're behaving, and thinking, what, what's wrong with these people? You know, what, what are they doing right now? And go ahead and turn over to Matthew 20. Let's just look at some things because again, this is a camp meeting message. I got a line. I got, and so I can kind of just talk about whatever I want. I could even change my, you know, my subjects right now if I wanted to. I got a line from the scriptures, but... Look what it says in Matthew 28, 18. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. You know what words we often forget sometimes is when Jesus, when he gave that great commission, and I know you all know about the great commission. We just had 30-some people out practicing the Great Commission, going out and preaching the gospel to people. So you all know that. But you know, something that soul winners even often forget sometimes is that line that Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. You know, one thing that we often forget is the authority that we have behind us when we go soul winning. Because a, you know, a lot of times we get nervous when we see the signs, you know, not to go there, when, you know, you know, do not enter, you know, the housing complexes and things. You know, we get nervous by different laws. And I'm not saying we need, you know, when it comes to some of those things, I'm all for getting creative. And we get creative in our church. Uh, we break a lot of rules when it comes to uh, soul winning in our town. We break a lot of rules and we never get in trouble for it. You know why? Because we play smart. All right. And, and there, there's a way to do it. Uh, you know, and... Uh, you know, that's why too, if you're going to go into housing complexes, we've learned go on the weekends because like all the managers and the staff people, they're never there on the weekends. So you can get away with a lot of stuff and then don't go consecutive weeks. Don't go at the same times. You know, they're, 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 you know, we've got all kinds of methods that we use, uh, to get away with these things. But at the same time, you know, at the end of the day though, whenever we, we go out and I have to tell myself this sometimes if we're not careful, we can start getting a little timid, start acting a little sheepish, start acting a little bit like we're not supposed to be doing these things. But the truth is, Jesus said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And so therefore, the highest authority in the universe has given us the okay to just go and preach to everyone. And we need to understand that when we go out there, we are allowed to do what we're doing. Okay, not just and, and thankfully, even as Americans, we're, we pretty much are. 
And we are very blessed because of that to be able to go out there and freely knock doors the way we do. Thank God that we have that privilege. But either way, we don't ever want to forget the fact that we have all power and authority backing us. We have with us the authority to go tell people what Jesus, God's word says and change their eternal destination. I don't know about you, but that makes me feel pretty good. When you stop and think about that, we have that authority. He is, God has granted us that ability. It'd be kind of like a president if he gave an ambassador to another country. Maybe he's going to send an ambassador to another country. And a lot of times that president, he may give him some power and authority behind him to make certain decisions. All right. He might give him some certain negotiating power. Hey, here's, you know, it's going to be limited to a certain extent. But when he goes and he's talking to that, you know, king or president or whatever, from another country, he when he's doing it with the backing of the president, he's doing it with the authority of the president of the United States. And, you know, that's a lot of power right there. And understand, when we go out and we're talking to people, we are going on behalf of God Almighty. Amen. We are going on behalf of Jesus Christ himself. He, is, he has directly sent us. You know, and, there, and, there's, and here's the cool thing, too. It's not like this long chain of command. I mean, it's literally Jesus backing me. When I go out, I don't know about you, I kind of like that power. I kind of, you know, we got a lot of power crazy people. You know, people always talk about IFB, how the pastors are power crazy and stuff. Well, I like to see them get power crazy about the fact we can go out and just preach the gospel to whoever we want. I know some of the IFB preachers who are power crazy, they get bent out of shape when other IFB preachers are breaking all the rules out there when it comes to soul winning and going wherever they want. Well, where did that guy get that? I'll tell you where he got that. He found out he had all power and all authority from Jesus Christ himself. And, and you know, and yeah, it's possible the governments can decide to interfere with us and try to stop us and try to hinder us from what we're doing. But at the end of the day, they can't get away with that unless God allows them to. And God might allow them to harass us sometimes. God might let you get us tested a little bit. God might want to give us some rewards for some of those things. But either way, you know, if the cops come after us and if we get in some kind of trouble, understand anything that they do to us, God is allowing it. And we, we just need to understand we answer to him. And so what, that ought to give us a confidence when we go out. That ought, whenever we go up to a house, it doesn't matter who you're, it doesn't matter if you're in a rich neighborhood. You know what? It's the same gospel for the rich as it is for the poor. It doesn't matter if you're going into a really you know, safe neighborhood with a bunch of you know, old people or you're going into some crazy hood somewhere where you feel like you could get shot. Either way, when we're there, we're there with the power and the authority of Jesus Christ behind us. And you know what he said? And lo, I am with you always. Amen. So, I mean, think about this. You know, if, for example, you know, if an ambassador from another country, you know, he goes and he's, uh, you know, representing the president, uh, he, one of our ambassadors is representing the president of the United States. Okay. If it's like a country where, you know, maybe there's some hostility between us and them, they're going to want to be very careful how they treat that ambassador because how they treat that ambassador is going to uh, reflect how they feel about the president, the one sending them. And so if they treat them bad, it's not just that individual. Like if I'm an ambassador for Donald Trump, it's not Tommy McMurtry that they're going to be getting mad. It's going to be the president. Okay. And while I'm, it might not be a big deal if I'm your enemy, it's a real big deal if the president's your enemy. And so understand when we go out there, those people that we're facing off with, while they might have some issues with us, just understand the one that they'd actually be going after. It's not us. It's Jesus Christ. Amen. And so because we have him backing us up because he ha we, we have him with us. What do we need to worry about? Right. Amen. Hey, you know, listen, you know, if I did, if, if I, you know, it would make me feel powerful to have a badge, you know, like the police do. You know, that, I could see that going to my head real fast. I, I used to help in a body shop, and I remember one time I got to drive a police car for like three miles uh, from a dealership. Uh, they're to the shop and I, oh man, I wanted to make that siren go so bad. I saw the controls there for the siren and everything. I was like, man, I could pull somebody over right now. But the truth is, I don't even want to know what would have happened to me if I'd have done that. You know, because I don't have a badge. I don't have that authority. I kind of thought I did. I could have made some people think I did. But at the end of the day, 
you know, I've always thought it'd be cool to pull somebody over. And while I would have had a great opportunity to do it that day, I didn't do it. You know why? Because I didn't have anything backing me. I didn't have that badge. I didn't have that power. And so I didn't do anything. I, I didn't mess around. And understand when you, uh, you know, when you disrespect the authority that that police officer has, you're going against the town. If it's the city police, you're going against the state. If it's the state police. And understand, when people go against us, when we're out there on behalf of Jesus Christ, they're going against Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, you know, we don't need to take it personal. Right. Exactly. And I, I love when I see cops, you know, I watch some of the police shows and things. I love cops when they have, they're able to, like, keep their cool when people are being belligerent, when people are being ignorant and just acting like the fool, and they don't take it personal. And they do. I love the ones that can just stand there, just stone face, and they just, you know, hey, just, you know, keep going. You know, this is all on video. You're just racking up trouble for yourself, they, and they just keep their cool. Then you got other ones that are the kind of the, they're the bad ones. They get all bent out of shape. They get all insecure. They get, they get insulted by these things. You know, we shouldn't be that way as Christians. There's going to be people out there. They don't, they're going to, they might go after you. They might try to make it personal. Listen, it's not about us. It's about Jesus Christ. And we have all authority back in us. We have, every, we have every right to be giving them the gospel. They should be thankful we are giving them the gospel. And I say all that to say, it's like a lot of Christians, uh, times Christians, we forget these things that Jesus told us. We forget these words that he said, and don't ever let people intimidate you. Don't ever let people scare you. Okay? The, this is exactly what Jesus said to do it. But many times Christians, you know, they do, they get discouraged because they feel useless. Maybe they feel defeated, but the truth is, you know, are you going to do what you've been called to do? Right. This is, this is, this is our job. This is what we've been called to do. Remember he is, you know, he's with you. This, that's what, why did he say that? Why did Jesus have to mention and lo, I'm with you always? You know, I had to mention that because he knew there's going to be some tough times. There's going to be some dark days ahead. You're going to have some challenging times. You're going to have times where it's fruitful, where you're accepted. You're going to have other times where not only is it not fruitful, but you're going to be persecuted. And just mark it down. Whenever the persecution's coming, me, the one who rose from the dead, I'm going to be with you during that time. And so just keep on going. Just keep on doing it. Because, you know, I would hate to be like the children of Israel who didn't trust God when he was with them in the wilderness. God was with them in that wilderness, wasn't he? God was with them when they went through the Red Sea. God was with them when they went to Jericho the first time and got scared and didn't believe that God would deliver them. And then they had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. I don't want to make that mistake. I don't want to be like them. Because understand too, you know, even if you go back and, and you read uh, uh, about the children of Israel coming out of Egypt, there was a lot of things that they went through that they complained about that God warned them about. God told them it was going to come. So when these difficulties came, they should have been like, well, guess what? God's right again. This is what he said. And all the things that often get Christians to quit, that get Christians discouraged, they are all things that Jesus said was going to happen. And just show me where the Bible says everything's going to be rosy. Everything's going to be good. Listen, part of that story was bad in Matthew 17, where Jesus said, I'm going to be betrayed, delivered in the hands of sinful men, and I'm going to be crucified. That's bad news. But there was good news in the end. But three days later, I'm going to rise from the dead. Yeah, but Lord, that's going to be a terrible three days. Yeah, but after three days, I'm going to rise again from the dead. And y'all realize that the greatest victories, the greatest things that we see in the Bible all come after the greatest challenges, after the greatest difficulties. And we all love those you know, glorious moments in the Bible where all these great things happen, but we forget that it was a dark time that they were in that made that great thing happen such a great event. You know, you, you can't have a David and Goliath experience without having the Goliath. You have, those things have to be there, yet those are the things that often discourage us, even though Jesus said those things are going to happen. So we just need to remember his words and remember all of them, just like that. Well, this is what he says is going to happen. We're going to have difficulties. We're going to have challenges. So turn over to uh, Matthew chapter 10. Here's another great passage, another thing that Jesus clearly stated to his disciples that I'm afraid that we often we often forget about. He says, What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light, what ye hear in the ear, that preach upon the housetops. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. 
Now, Jesus said not to fear, but you know what? Let's just admit it. We all fear sometimes a little bit the body getting killed, right? Because you know what? I've never been killed before, but I've heard it hurts. And therefore, and I don't like pain. I know my soul's okay. I, I know I'm going to be fine. If I die, I'm going to go to heaven. But at the same time, you know, it's like you can't help but worry a little bit, right? But here, here's the thing on that. You know, the Bible talked about, I uh, think in Hebrews 11, about those who, you know, they weren't going to accept deliverance because they wanted a better resurrection. And I think the reason Jesus said that, and I'll never be able to prove this until I get to heaven, I think the reason he told us not to fear that, even though pain, we should fear it a little bit, right? I mean, that you would think that. But here's the thing. I think if we knew what we were going to get in return for any suffering we had in this earth, I don't think we'd worry about it. I don't, think, you know, I don't think we'd worry about it at all. I tell people all the time, I would gladly dig ditches for a living if it paid enough. You know, if it was paying me minimum wage, eh, no, not really. If it's paying $100 an hour, give me the shovel. You know, I'll do it. And the, the thing is, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that sounds really bad that we could face, but the Bible also tells us about the rewards that we're going to get in heaven. And I think if we knew what those rewards were, we'd be like, who cares? I mean, bring it. I think we would actually leap for joy when we're persecuted, like the Bible says to do. I think we would actually not fear them that are able to kill the body if we actually would remember these words and believe these things. And so look what it says. Let's keep reading in verse, let's jump down to 32. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and her daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foe shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. You know, what did Jesus mean when he said, if you deny me before man, I'm going to deny you before my father, which is in heaven. Okay. What, what I personally believe that a lot of people use that to prove you can lose your salvation, which obviously that's not true. But basically, uh, the, way, the way I interpret this, it would be like, uh, for example, you know, say Brother Dan, all right? Brother Dan, I consider him a friend. Okay. And I, you know, me and him, we get along, we, we, we consider each other friends, but then let's go say that I'm somewhere and, um, you know, I get pulled over and I don't have any identification on me or something. And brother Dan, he could, he could identify me. He knows me. He's my friend. And then I, and here I need him to help me. I need him to help tell the police, Hey, Listen, I'm really who I said I am. I'm trying to get in that car, break in that car there because I like my keys in there. You know, this is really my car. You know, my, you know, I, you know, he, he can identify me. And then I call on him, hey, I need you right now to confess me. And then he's like, I, I don't know that guy because he's embarrassed by me. You know, maybe he's ashamed of me or maybe, yeah, maybe it wasn't even a situation like that. But maybe he just, you know, where there's a, there's a group of people and he's just embarrassed to be identified with me. And so what does he do? He denies me before men. Well, then if he does that type of thing and then later he's in a situation and he needs me, you know, he needs, you know, it would help him if he was associated with me. And I'm like, I don't know that guy. You know, that's what I'm going to, that's what I probably end up doing to him. Oh, really? Now you're my buddy. You know, now that you need me to be your friend, you know, now all of a sudden I matter. Forget you. And I think that's what God's saying. Because there's going to be times in our life where we do. We desperately need God. Yeah. We, and not only do we need God, we need God to do something to show that we are on his, that he's on our side and that he's with us. We need God to answer our prayers. You know, there's going to be times in your life where you need God to answer your prayer. Maybe something's going on and you know, and you do. You need God to answer a prayer. You need God to do a work in your life. But you know what? If we've been denying God with everyone that's around us, why would God do some work, a public, especially something public? Why would God do some big thing in our life, you know, to show him, to show that he's with us when we're not willing to show that we're with him when he needs us? And understand, God needs us out there. God needs you all outside these doors, representing him, telling people about him. And if you're not willing to do that, you know what? 
whenever it comes time for you, when you need God, forget you. You're, you're, you're on your own. I, I believe that's what that's talking about right there. I don't think that's a salvation thing at all. And so notice how in this passage, you know, he's saying, fear not them which can kill the body. You know, there's gonna, there might be times, thankfully we live in the United States, you know, we're not getting threatened with our lives, but there might come a day where we do, we need God to do a miracle. We might need God to do something like he did for Peter where he got him out of prison. You know, that we might need something like that. And so understand though, that when Jesus also said in this passage, he came not to send peace, but a sword. Okay, so understand what we're doing today, you know, we're just, we're just on the, we're always on the wrong side of history, aren't we? Doesn't history always hate us? You know, we're, we're, we have to be on the wrong side of every issue. We're never popular. You know, we're, we're always the ones, we're the ones that get censored. We're not the ones that get put on television. You know, we're not the ones that they show in a positive light on the news. We're just, we're never the popular people, are we? And, and often we're the ones that are being persecuted and you know, uh, you know, that stinks, but at the same time, as long as we're representing God, as long as we are, we're not denying him, we're telling the truth, when the, when the tough times come, I believe he will show himself strong. I believe he will give us that deliverance. I believe that God will bless us when we need it. And so we need to make sure we just don't let that stuff bother us. Because he said, fear not them to kill the body, because there's going to be times where there's going to be people that want to kill your body. So just understand when that happens, Okay, and this is what just drives me crazy sometimes, and, and, and I get it, but at the same time, it, it drives me crazy. Whenever these things that Jesus said was going to happen, happen, we're often like, I don't understand what's going on. feels like the Lord's abandoned me. But wait a minute, didn't he say this type of thing was going to happen? So, you know, again, you don't get the resurrection without the death. You know, you don't get, you don't get these victories without the challenge. We've got to just, we've got to learn to take both, but often we forget those words and it's during those times you need to remember, you need to remember these words. So turn over to Matthew chapter 6 and verse 31. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 31. Is this the red back hymn book that the camp meeting people are always talking about? No, that's not it? Okay. That's why you ain't having revival here. You got to get... No, that's the Church of God hymn book, I think, is what I've been told. They're always talking about that red back hymn book. you, you got to have that. But Sorry, I got sidetracked on that. Yeah, Matt, Matthew chapter 6, I didn't even turn over there. And verse number 31, look what it says here. It says, take, therefore take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So notice I said, take no thought for the morrow. See? Now, I got to thinking about this this week. You know, aren't we glad? Sometimes we wish we all knew what was coming, right? We wish we all knew what was coming down the road. But think about this. What if in 2019 we would have known about 2020? Think about it. I mean, now, wasn't 2020, at 2019, at the end of 2019, everybody was so excited about 20. I mean, 2020, I mean, it's 2020, Acts 2020. I mean, this is going to be the year. This is going to be our year, right? That was everybody's attitude. I've never seen so much optimism as I did going into 2020. This was going to be the year. Folks, this is the worst year that anyone's ever seen. Now, aren't we glad? You know, but the thing, think about this. What could we have possibly done if we would have known what 2020 was going to be like? I'm glad I didn't know what was coming. Yeah, we'd have worried all year. You know, we'd have been stocking toilet paper, you know, all 2019. You know, we'd have started the panic buying earlier. We'd have been doing all that stuff. And, you know, and at the end of the day, too, folks, you know, 2020 hasn't really been that bad. Okay? I mean, let, you know, as much as I love to complain, I love to complain about it. It hasn't been that bad. But I'm glad I didn't know what was coming. If you'd have told me this was coming, I'd have been worried about it. I, I mean, I, I was worried about it this year when I started hurting them. I remember when they first started saying, everybody's going to have to start wearing masks. I was like, this is it. This is it. Tribulation. I mean, I, I remember we went, to, we went to Sam's 
it was right when the panic buying got going and everybody was going crazy in the toilet paper. And I remember we were in Sam's. It was real crowded in there. And I remember we saw two people wearing masks. And it was just like, what is wrong with this world? You know, these people are really freaking out already. And we saw because we saw two people wearing masks. If you'd have told me then, hey, it's going to be everybody before long, I'd been like, uh, I'd been like, you're crazy. You know what? I'm glad I didn't know. I'm glad God doesn't tell us everything that's coming. But you know what he did say, though? Sufficient unto the days, the evil thereof. You know what God, he was basically saying? There's going to be times like 2020. There's going to be years like this that are going to come along. And so you know what? Don't worry about those things. Don't think about those things. You know what? Seek first the kingdom of God Amen. and his righteousness. You can do that at any time. Amen. You can always do that. You don't have to have a good economy for that. You don't have to have good circumstances for that. And so it's, you know, it, it's good to know that God knew it was coming. But, you know, we're better off not knowing. We're better off not knowing a lot of these things. I mean, think about it. You know, we're all going to face, we've all faced and we all are going to face tragedies in our life. But if we knew what those tragedies were going to be, then we would be worried about them all the time. I was just visiting somebody. They were talking about the house is gone now. It burned down. But they were talking about how it was like a family farm, been in their family for generations. They were talking about how, like, the granddad was born in this one room and died in that room. And then the son was born and died in that room. I forgot how many generations, like, born and died in that room. And I was just like, man, if I was in that family, I'd never go in that room. <laughs> but, but, you know, it, it, was, it was something they all, you know, kind of thought was cool and like. But, I, I, you know, that, that's how I would be. And, you know, I'm thankful for all the things that we don't know. But you know what? Thankfully, God does know. And he's told us we don't need to worry about it. So, you know, we don't need to worry about these things. You know, the, it's, it's, it's during the 20, 20, times like 2020 when we get a chance to actually practice some of these things and then not worry even in 2020. Just because Jesus said not to. That, that's what we ought to do. And I'm, I'm thankful for those words. I like what he said in Acts 20, 35. I'll just go through some of these real quick. I like when Jesus says uh, how we ought to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. You know, that's a great passage there. That's a, that's a great statement right, right there. Think about how much better we, off we would all be emotionally if we were more focused on the needs of others. I mean, think about that, Espe you know, especially during times like this. You don't want, you don't want to know why everybody got so crazy, you know, back in April and when all the panic buying and stuff was going on? Because everybody's thinking about themselves. Everybody's thinking about, you know, you know, how much of a turmoil and tribulation it would be if they ran out of toilet paper. You know, and so they're being greedy. They're being selfish. Man, you know, we had a time where things were uncertain. Things were scary. We had an opportunity to just all come together as a country. And what did we do? We fell apart. I mean, man... I, the, the saddest thing I think about 2020 is just the way we've all been, you know, behaved, the way everybody's response to it. I mean, this is, this is truly an embarrassing thing. You know, I, I do believe this is a year that I hope in, in history we look back and we're all just embarrassed by it. I, I really do hope because we should be ashamed at, at how uh, we've been as, as a country this year. Um, and it is more blessed to give than receive. That goes for all the time. It's during times like this when we actually have the a, a more opportunity to give because there's more needs. You know, in America, we don't really have that many opportunities to do that just because everybody's doing pretty good in America. Everybody's, everybody's doing just fine. I saw one of these trendy churches on their Facebook that I like to make fun of, one of these skinny jean pastors. And it was, it was funny because um, this was early from earlier on in the pandemic. And one of the things that they did, that their church did to minister to their community, is they went to a Little Caesars and bought a whole bunch of pizzas and were just giving away free pizzas. And it's like, okay, first off, nobody was starving during the pandemic. Everybody got fat. And so it's like, you just going out and handing out pizzas to everybody, just out driving, okay? You're not helping anybody. You know what that's called? That's called marketing. It's called advertising. Now, I'm all for marketing and advertising. But please don't act like that's ministering and act like you're just doing some wonderful thing for the community. All right. First off, it's Little Caesars. It's like, you know, and se se you know, second of all, yeah, I mean, if you're, you know, at least do Pizza Hut or something like that or Domino's or you know, pretty much anybody. But you know, e either way, and I eat a lot of Little Caesars, trust me. But at the same time, you know, it's just, it's sad. 
you know, why don't you give some of these people what they really need, yeah. you know? And, uh, you know, but this year I think we've had some more opportunities. You know, I like what Jesus said in John 16, 33. I don't like it, but I'm at the same time, since I know that this is true, I'm glad that he said it because it helps my faith. Jesus said in John 16, 33, in me, Jesus, you have peace. In the world, ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Notice how in a lot of these things, you know, the first part, it's kind of bad. What he said is going to come, but it ends with something good. You know, in the world, you shall have tribulation. That stinks. That's bad news. But he's overcome the world. That, you know what that tells me? He can overcome that tribulation that we're going through too. But if we're not careful, happen, we're going to find ourselves in the tribulation and we're going to forget his words. We're not going to think to recall these things. That's when we should be saying, hey, this is exactly what God said to do. If he's right about this, he's going to be right about the second part too. If he's right about, the, and the truth is, it should concern us. It should worry us when these things don't happen. You know, we should be worried if we never suffer persecution. In fact, that should scare you to death because the Bible says, yeah, all the love godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. I listened to a guy the other day on the internet. He was, you know, criticizing the IFB and he was talking about how, you know, they're always, they always think they're getting persecuted and having this persecution complex. He's like, you know, I've been a Christian for a long time. I've never been persecuted. <laughs> I, mean, I literally busted out laughing when he said that. He's just one of these effeminate. He's like, I've never been persecuted. And I was like, of course not. You're not godly. You are just like the world. You are a friend to the world. So why would you go through anything? That you should get scared if these things are never happening to you. If not, if nobody, if, I mean, if you've never had any kind of persecution, that's because you're not doing anything. That's all there is to it. And yet these churches, they they often they'll look at churches like ours and they'll just talk about, well, you know, what a horrible test. You are bringing reproach and name Christ. You're making Christ look bad. Why? Because they're saying bad things about you. What did they say about Jesus? And didn't Jesus say they're going to treat us the same way? Now, let's, let's go see what they're saying about you. Oh, that's right. They're always writing about you in the newspaper. They're always, oh, you know, yeah, you're getting invited, you know, to get the key to the city. You know, you're getting all these accolades from these worldly politicians. You even have the politicians coming into your church and letting them speak behind your pulpit. And then you act like we're bringing reproach in the name of Christ. I do seem to remember the powers that be putting Jesus to death. I seem to remember the king putting, you know, everybody always like when they want to get, you know, overly involved in politics and which for, you know, in the Baptist world is code for promoting the Republican platform. Whenever they want to go overboard on that, I was like, John the Baptist was involved in politics and he got his head cut off. And what, what did he do? I've had multiple people bring up John the Baptist to prove we should get involved in politics. It's like, he said, it is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. And they use that as code for support Donald Trump. I, 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 don't, I mean, it just, folks, it, it blows my mind, all right? And listen, I love Fox News Baptist. I'm friends with Fox News Baptist. I mean, I, you know, I get accused of being a Fox News Baptist sometimes, all right? I mean, I, I like Fox News Baptist, but at the same time, man, they drive me nuts. I mean, they just absolutely sometimes just really irritate me. And it's like, come on, people. You really, I, I heard somebody use Jeremiah the other day. Jeremiah got thrown in, in the dungeon. <laughs> Jeremiah sunk in the mind. Really? You're going to use Jeremiah? These guys were always standing before kings, and they weren't kissing their hand. They weren't bowing the knee to them. They were usually standing before them. They, he mentioned the Apostle Paul. You remember how the Apostle Paul stood before King Agrippa in chains? That's, listen, it, it just it, it, it amazes me. That, but at the same time, isn't that what Jesus said that they were going to do to them? This is exactly, all those things that happened to the disciples are exactly what Jesus said was going to happen. And the truth is, we should get worried when those things don't happen, yet that's when a lot of people quit. That's when a lot of people give up. And the truth is, the reason for that is I'm afraid many times it's because, you know, I think we do know the words, all right? I mean, obviously none of us in here have all the Bible memorized. But the truth is, you know, we don't think about these things enough. We don't meditate on these things. We don't memorize these things. And we, a lot of times we end up remembering it after the fact 
after we've missed an opportunity. The disciples missed an opportunity by not being there at the resurrection, by not getting the crowd there at the resurrection. They missed an opportunity because they were too busy being discouraged and they didn't know until after the fact, after the angel had to flat out tell them, then they remembered his words. Well, you know what? I want to remember his words while I'm in the dark time. You know, I want to remember his words during the three days where he's in the tomb, not after the, re not after the resurrection. I want to remember those words while I'm in the tribulation before the overcoming takes place. I want to remember his words, you know, while I'm in the, you know, while I'm backed up against the Red Sea, not when the Red Sea's already parted after the fact. That's when we need to remember these things. That's when we need to remember his words. But, you know, how can we remember his words if, we're, if we don't know the words? How can we remember his words if we're not in the book? How can we remember his words if we're not listening to the preaching and being reminded of these things? How, can we, how are we going to remember his words if we're not putting into practice the things he said? You realize that, you know, it doesn't really do you any good to have the Great Commission and things like that memorized if you don't do it. I mean, I mean what good is a lot of this information if you're not practicing it, if you're not doing it, if you're not living godly, if you're not keeping the commandments, what good you know, is having these verses memorized? But the truth is, if we're pra actually practicing these things, that's going to put it in perspective, helping us remember them during those challenging times so we can actually be victorious. And Folks, we need people in 2020, in a year like we're having right now, to be living victorious during the difficult times. That's what we need. We need people living victorious in 2020, just like the disciples should have been living victorious during the three days that Jesus was dead. They should have been living victorious then because they had the promise of the resurrection. We should be living victorious while we are in the tribulation because we have the promise of him overcoming the world. We should have, we should always be living victorious because we have those promises. And so just understand for every bad thing that you go through, we have Jesus' words telling us that these things are going to happen. So you know what we should get from that? Jesus was right. But you know what else that does too? That tells us, well, you know what? If he's right about the difficult part, he's right about the victory that's coming later. And if we'll remember that right there, that will have us live a victorious life. And we don't have to be like the disciples living in hiding during the one of the most crucial times, greatest opportunity in the world. Think, I mean, think about it. I mean, I, I get it. Everything that happened in the Bible, it was meant to happen the way it did. All right, but if I can just speculate a little bit with me, think about what it would have been like if for those three days, th think about what it would have been like if while Jesus was on the cross, one or two of them disciples would have been standing there at the foot of the cross mm -hmm. saying, behold the Lamb of God that take away the sin of the world. Mm -hmm. If they had been saying, hey, they're putting him to death now. Three days later, he's coming back. I mean, Jesus warned him these things are going to happen. If for three days they had camped out outside that tomb, preaching about the resurrection, I'm telling you, you know there would have been a lot of people that had been there on that third day and would have seen it take place. I mean, one can only wonder what would have happened as a result of that. And the truth is we all have opportunities all the time and, and we're and we have them this year okay 2020 is not over folks y'all right. think this is going to be a cakewalk when this elect when this election happens all right listen if donald trump wins there's probably they're probably going to riot okay and they're 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 probably going to fight it it's going to be ugly you know if joe biden wins i mean come on Kamala harris is going to end up being the president as soon as they he you know they they finally admit he's got alzheimer's you know, you know he's not going to survive four years. I mean, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things. But you know what? Nothing that could potentially happen as a result of the election next month is going to stop. You know, it, it's going to change what we see coming in the Bible. It, there might be dark times either way, but God's word is still true. He's going to be with us. And so you know what we've got to do? We have to live victorious. Amen. We have to be victorious during time, during times like this, this is the opportunity. But you know who cares? You know what? Who cares if you're a great Christian in the glory days of the '70s? All right. Everybody likes to talk about the '70s. All right. I wasn't alive for the '70s, but I'm always hearing about these preachers talking about the glory days of the '70s. And you know, I'm glad you did great things in the '70s. Why don't you do something cool now? 
All right? I want to get something done in the 20s. That, that's when I want to get that, that's when I want to get something done when things are a mess. When things are just falling apart, I want to be victorious then, and that's what that's what we need today. And so if you're going to do that, you've got to remember his words. Remember his words. So with that, let's pray to your Lord. We thank you so much for your word. We thank you for the promises that you've given us. And dear God, I pray you'll help us to just cling to these things, help us to study these things, memorize them. And Lord, more, most importantly, that we will put them into practice uh, when we have the chance. And Lord, we have a chance right now. Lord, this is, this is the year. This is the time for us to be uh, living victorious and uh, putting our trust in you. And Lord, there is nothing that has happened this year that has taken you by surprise. There's nothing that's happened this year that we've not in one way or another been warned about in the scriptures. And so, dear God, I pray you'll help us to hang on to the promise of what's to come. And you'll help us to be victorious uh, before the victory even gets here. Because we, be, Just because we have the promise. And I pray it will be a great testimony. And it will honor you as we do. In your name we pray. Amen.